Good evening students. Today we will discuss the basic things of the important cranial bones and the facial bones. You must come to the examination hall with this basic knowledge. That means what are the important presenting parts of the bones and how to hold the bone in anatomical position. Let us discuss one by one. This is frontal bone and the presenting parts are expanded squamous part, then two orbital part or orbital plate, this is nasal part and this u-shaped notch is the ethmoidal notch and the outer surface is convex to frontal eminence, then this is supraorbital margin, this is supraciliary arch, this is glabella and on the inner side this is the frontal crest and the orbital plate having one orbital surface facing downwards and these two lateral margin which will articulate with the parietal bone and two important foramen of this bone one is supraorbital foramen and one is foramen cecum when it will articulate with the ethmoid bone like this. This foramen cecum usually transmit no structure but sometimes an emissary vein passes through this foramen and this is the anatomical position of the frontal bone. So that the convex surface facing forward, orbital surface facing downwards and inner frontal case facing backward and this angle it is upwards. So this is the anatomical position of frontal bone. Then come to the parietal bone. This is parietal bone having two surfaces, outer surface which is convex and this is parietal eminence and this is inner surface which is concave and there are four borders, anterior border or frontal border, this is posterior border, this is superior border or sagittal border and this is inferior border. Inferior border it is identified by this bevelled margin and it is shorter than the superior border and there are four angles, anterior superior angle, anterior inferior angle, posterior superior angle and posterior inferior angle. On the inner side close to the anterior inferior angle there is a groove which is extending upwards and backwards for the middle meningeal vessels and posterior inferior angle here, here there is a groove for the sigmoid sinus. So you have to hold the bone in such a way so that the anterior inferior angle would be forwards and downwards, posterior inferior angle it is backwards and downwards and bevel margin of the inferior border facing downwards and convex surface outwards. So this is the anatomical position of the parietal bone of right side and this is the parietal bone of left side because this is pointed anterior inferior angle and the group for the sigmoid sinus close to the posterior inferior angle. So you have to hold the parietal bone of left side in this way and right side in this way. Occipital bone. This is occipital bone having three important parts around this foramen magnum. Behind the foramen magnum, this part is the squamous part. On each side of the foramen magnum is the condylar part and in front of the foramen magnum is the basilar part. The squamous part having inner surface and having Tanva sulcus on each side and this is the occipital crest inside and posteriorly this is convex and this prominence is called the external occipital protuberance from which the superior nuchal line and below inferior nuchal line passing outwards and this border is called the parietal border and this border is called the mastoid border and these two are the lateral angles and this is superior angle. And the condylar part having the condyle on the under surface and having jugular process or jugular notch is here and the basilar part it articulate with the sphenoid bone forming a joint called basi occiput or basi sphenoid. This is the private cartilaginous joint and ossified at the age of about 25 years. Two important foramen of the occipital bone. One is foramen magnum and another one is this foramen or anterior condylar canal or hypoglossal canal transmits the hypoglossal nerve and foramen magnum transmits medulla oblongata with meninges, spinal axillary nerve, vertebral arteries, 
anterior and posterior spinal arteries. So you have to hold the bone in such a way so that this convex commas part with this external occipital protuberance projecting backwards, then the basilar part forward and the foramen magnum will be at a horizontal plane. So this is the anatomical position of the occipital bone. Then come to the sphenoid. This is sphenoid. It is bad sepet. The presenting parts are body in the center and wings laterally. There are two greater wings on each side and two lesser wings. And the pterygoid process it is projecting downwards. The body having six surfaces superior, inferior, anterior, posterior and two lateral surface. And anteriorly the superior surface having this ethmoidal spine, then jugam sphenoidally, then a sulcus called sulcus chiasmaticus, then tuberculum celli, then hypophysial fossa, then dorsum celli. And the pterygoid process projecting downwards, there are two plates, medial plate and lateral plate of the pterygoid process and there is a fossa posteriorly between the two plates called the pterygoid fossa and inferiorly the two plates they are not fusing here called the pterygoid fissure but anteriorly they are fused. And the greater wings there are three surfaces, upper cerebral surface, this is a lateral surface and one is orbital surface and lesser wings also having superior surface and inferior surface and anterior border and the posterior border. The anterior clinoid process, middle clinoid process, posterior clinoid process. And the foramen of the sphenoid bone from anterior to posterior, this is optic canal, the structure processing the optic nerve and ophthalmic artery, then superorbital fissure between the lesser wing and greater wing of the sphenoid, then this is foramen rotundum transmitting the maxillary nerve, then foramen lovel and behind it foramen spinosum, this is the spine of the sphenoid. You have to hold the bone in such a way so that the anterior border with the ethmoidal spine of the body is directed forward and cilator sica here will be on the superior surface of the body and two pterygoid process it is projecting downwards. So this is the anatomical position of the sphenoid. Then come to the temporal bone. This is temporal bone. It is having mainly four parts. One is the squamous part, then petromastoid part, then tympanic part and styloid process. The squamous part having inner surface and outer surface, then superior border and anterior inferior border, mastoid part, outer surface, inner surface. On the inner surface there is a group for the sigmoid sinus and it is superior border and posterior border. The petrous part, it is piriabular in shape having a base and apex, anterior border, superior border, posterior border, anterior surface, post posterior surface and inferior surface. This is gigantic process and this is tympanic plate and this is the articular part of the mandibular fossa articulating with the head of the mandible forming temporomandibular joint. And important uh, foramen of this bone on the inferior surface this is a carotid foramen or carotid opening through which passes the internal carotid artery. One opening at the apex for the exit of the internal carotid artery and this is stylomastered foramen between the styloid process here and the mastered process here, structures passing facial nerve and the stylomastered branch of foster auricular artery. An important fissure is there called petrotympanic fissure through which the three important structures are passing. And sometimes this mastered foramen may be present here, maybe one, maybe two, or maybe three. Lastly, you have to hold the bone in anatomical position in this way so that the Thin and expanded squamous part, it is directed upwards, thicker mastered part projecting downwards and backwards, elongated gigantic process facing forwards and medially, then lateral aspect of the bone presents an opening called external acoustic meatus, which determines the side. So this is the bone of the left side and 
this is the temporal bone of right side so right and left come to the mandible this is mandible it is the largest and strongest facial bone pregening parts are body and ramus and junction of these two a vertical line extending behind the third molar teeth then downwards up to the base this body having the outer surface and inner surface on the outer surface there is a foramen called mental foramen and here is the symphysis menti and upper border or called alveolar border and lower border called the base and at the midline close to the base there is a fossa called the digastric fossa where there is attachment of the anterior digastric muscle and posteriorly there are four tubercles called superior and inferior genial tubercle and here one mylohyoid line is there mylohyoid groove is there and on the ramus the two surfaces outer surface and inner surface and four borders anterior border posterior border inferior border and superior border the superior border also called the mandibular notch and this process is called the coronoid process and this process is called the condylar process which articulates with the articulate part of mandibular fossa of the temporal bone and this foramen is called the mandibular foramen through which the structures passing the inferior alveolar basilar and nerve and anteriorly one foramen is there called mental foramen through which the mental nerve which is sensory nerve comes out from this foramen and this is the angle of the mandible which is found between the lower border and posterior border of the ramus not any part from the body and this is the angle of the mandible which is inverted in this particular bone so it is a male mandible if it is inverted like this here it is inverted so it is a female mandible so you have to hold the bone in this way then come to the maxilla this is maxilla it is also a pneumatic bone because it presents the maxillary air sinus and if you are asked what are the other pneumatic bones maxilla frontal then ethmoidal or ethmoid and also the sphenoid the presenting parts are body and four processes the body having the upper surface or orbital surface then posterior surface then anterior surface and one medial surface here you will get this opening of the maxillary hiatus and four process are frontal process this one then this is parodontal process and this is zygomatic process and this is alveolar process so you have to hold the bone in such a way so that the frontal process facing upwards and the opening of the maxillary hiatus it is facing medially and the parodontal process also it is projecting medially to articulate with the parodontal process of maxilla of the opposite side forming the part of the hard palate so this is the anatomical position of the maxilla of left side and this is the anatomical position of maxilla of right side so this is the two maxilla one right one left anatomical position the ethmoid it is having three presenting parts one is the cribriform plate one is the perpendicular plate and two lateral mass or called labyrinth the two labyrinths are connected by this cribriform plate where you will get so many foramina and this is cristegalaya ethmoid from the superior surface of the cribriform plate and the lateral mass having the orbital surface which is on the lateral side of the ethmoid bone on both sides so the cristegalai which is ala will be on the superior side and towards the anterior side so you have to hold the bone in such a way so that the cribriform plate with the foramina and cristegalai will be on the upper aspect and the perpendicular plate of the bone projecting from the under surface of the cribriform plate and two lateral mass or labyrinthing laterally so this is the anatomical position of the ethmoid thank you very much